again. Welcome back to the workshop. Uh, today we're going to actually start using some of the sticks we uh, collected last time. I think we'll go stool next, which is simple again. Got some tops here. This one's an Alandii that was just an off cut from one of the trees, but I thought it was quite nice because it's got a heart shape in it. And this just a piece of oak, roughly cut around. I think that was a piece of um, an old chair or something, garden furniture that had rotted away, so I managed to save a little bit of it. So we can use those for the tops. I have some legs here. These are just chops, chopped off bits of ash. I removed the branches. So we can use these. And what we'll do is we'll dowel cut the end. Now I'm going to use this one. We'll use both today. And then just a matter of Great tool, isn't it? So these I'm going to use with this. So we'll think about the length. Now I don't actually want them to come all the way out because I quite like the pattern, so I'll stop them halfway. So we'll imagine that's about halfway. Just all three of these. So that's three, three dowel ends cut. Now I've smoothed off this side, so we're going to actually use this as the bottom. And we're drilling just the holes now. We drill them at a slight angle, because it'd be nice if they sit, rather than straight down, it'd be nice if they sit in an angle. So we need to find something that fits this. I know it's actually an inch. We can use our inch spade bit to drill that. Or the force a bit. We might try the force a bit, because it's I say it's quite clean cut. To um, to mark my angles, I'm thinking I'd like them to be about that angle, so I might just mark them, cut this as my piece of cardboard here. So this is just a marker, so I know roughly what angle to cut at. Now we have to start straight because you saw it just rolled away there, so we have to start straight and then go to our angle. So there we are at the angle. Remember, I don't want to come out the other side, so what I'll do is I'll put a bit of tape on here as deep as I can go. So that's my depth, so I don't go past the tape. So it's close enough. One done. So again, start straight until we've got somewhere to sit in and then we'll mark. It's sort of a triangle, it's not right, it doesn't have to be too accurate, but as long as there's a little bit of a triangle there. We have our three holes in there, that's to accept these. So, nice tight fit, that's good. I'm just going to put, take the sharp edge off this just so it runs in a bit easier. So just go around and just take and then I'm going to think how that would like to sit. The stool's here, it doesn't want to sit be nice if it sort of comes out. So we're going to set that out and then pop it in. We get home.
here it's in again. Quite a tall stall that one. Yeah that works well. <laughs> now the beauty of a three-legged stool is it's always gonna it's not gonna rock because there's three legs. Well, there you go, they all get their own character. So there's a stool. Now we're just um, to use this piece of top and we'll draw, show a slightly different technique because what I'll do is I'll bring these straight through so that we can see them on the top. I'm trying to miss this, there's a little split there and I don't actually want that too much in the... So I'm going to do my holes there. I'm drawing a triangle now. Roughly. I'll drill these down on the floor actually because it'd be handier to put my foot on it. Now, I'm going for the angle again, so we'll start off flat. And then I, I went to the angle. There's the holes drilled. Um, we pop these in. some cuts on these so I'm going to do a cut there, there, do one at a time, and a cut, a cut in there, and then Pop it back in. I have these off cuts here. I always save if there's an off cut that looks wedged, like a wedge, I'll save it so I've got all sorts in this bag. So I'll probably use one of these. Measure the width. Actually, I'll cut that to the width. Pop that in there. And then I can trim that off. Now I'll do that to all three of these. And then we can just sand it off. That's the three done. Put the wedges in and then you can just sand them. And there's another another way of finishing the stool. And it's quite a nice little feature as well, where the wedges have actually split the dowels out, which makes them doubly tight. So that's grand. There's another stool. So we have two stools. Chair next, which is just just Slightly building on from this, same jointing techniques, so uh, we'll get stuck into that. We're using the hazel that we cut. So what I usually do is I look for features. Here's one I found. Now a chair, if you can imagine the back of a chair, the leg kicks back and then your back so I, I try and find her fancy this I could have used this as well I usually put the two together to see which matches and I found these two bits of wood match reasonably well so I could use these two as the back of my chair so I've cut them accordingly so that's the back but then I found two front legs Again, now the size of these, I mean chairs are all different sizes, I usually measure a chair that I like, so to get an idea of how big it is. I sit on a chair, if it's the right height, I'll measure that height, so that's a good height for me. Um, so there's two front legs, there's another one I've cut there, so that's what we're going to use. There's the front legs. 
and there's the backs. Now everything else are the stretches and things. So I've cut an assortment here. So there's a few to be started with. And these will just be the cross members in that direction and in that direction. Now I'm going to do them all the same. So these are all exactly the same length. I went for 19 inches. I'll do it by foot power this time, just for make a change. I'm just spending Way. Cutting the dowel ends onto these. The drill is quicker, isn't it? But I, I quite like this. We just there's no rush really. There's a dowel end, one dowel end. Now, as I said, maybe in the beginning video, if there's a bit much bigger end than this. It's sometimes nice just to pair it off a bit. You're only doing it roughly really, just making it a bit smaller so there's not quite so much material for this thing to take off. we we'll just make it something near and then you don't need quite so much footwork. So I'll just do all of these and uh, we can start putting parts of the chair together. So there we have those ends cut on, what have we got, six, eight. So I think eight will do us. Now when you're cutting these, they were all cut the same length to start with and then we want to make sure that all the Dowel ends stop in the same place, which they pretty much do. So I'm going to use the thicker ones for the actual seat part because that carries the weight of the person. So I need four of those, and then the thinner ones we we'll just use further down as just construction to hold the things together. So, we're going to assemble the side of the chair first. So the side basically will just be that and that. There's the side of our chair. So we just need fixings from there to there. So we lay it out as it wants to be. This is just looking, if you imagine looking on the chair, you see the back here, the legs there, and the ground there. So I'm going to use one of these. Yeah. And then one of these. Now that's got a nice funky curve in it. So I might think my seat could actually form that curve. So that could maybe go in there. So I'm going to mark these in my pen where I want to drill them. So I thought that could be nice there. I'm marking the centers now. That one wants to go in there. And then this, around about there. So this wants to go in somewhere near there, and this one wants to go in somewhere near there. So, another thing I'm looking at is, they're not dead straight, that's actually at a slight angle. And that one's at a slight angle. So I want to drill the holes at that angle so that can slide straight in. If it's straight, it'll be like this. So <clears throat> I'm going to draw that angle on. So 
So when I'm drilling, I can see the angle it needs to be. And this one, same again. Now these are dead straight. So that's grand, I can just drill them straight. So next is drilling, drilling these. I have a 19 mil millimetres or three quarters this one actually. Spade bit. I'm doing it on the floor because I find it handy to put your foot on it. Stop everything moving. This is where I marked it. And then I, on the side, I said I want to cut it at this angle. I'm going to go all the way through with this. Out the other side. The second hole was here. This is a straight one so I can just go dead straight. So that's it, we'll just pop them in. Now, we can use a fancy mallet, or we can just use an off cut of wood, which is basically a mallet without a handle. There we go, we pop them in, so they come out the other side. There's one, this was a straight one as well, so we pop that in. You can swivel them so that they are straight. If you notice that as straight as you can get them, straight that way, because if it's off of that angle, it'd be hard to just go into a flat piece there. Now, as I said, there's a bit of spring in these, the joy of greenwood, so we can allow for a few discrepancies as our holes there. You see they come out the end there, so that's good. This one not quite yet. There it is. So there's one side. We'll do the same for the other side now. mark where they want to be. So one there, this one here. So that's so they all come in the same place. Now I want to try and get this the way that's actually starting to develop a little splay out. You can see that there, so this can be the left hand side. I can try and get, see if I can get that on the other side. They sort of design themselves, these chairs. So there's the splay in that. And he wants to come out slightly like that. Like that. So that's not bad. Sticky. Fairly sticky. These things across here next. One there, one there, and then maybe something around here as well. And possibly one down here. So we mark those if I put them on top of each other. I can work out where they're gonna go. Line up the legs. So, I'm going to go from here to here, 
here, to here, and then something to sit on the front, go here, and I'll do the same on this side there. When I drill this cross member, what I'll try and do is slightly catch the catch this a tiny bit. So you can see there, that's where the, the other one would catch it. So it comes through like that. And especially from front to back. Because the chair, when you sit in the chair, you lean back on it like that, or you, you lean back on it. What I'll try and do is pull this joint apart. This joint here. So if your side member actually hooks slightly in like that, it's like a lock, so it can't actually put it apart. So that's what I do. So when I drill these in, I try and catch this dowel very slightly. So, we have the two front holes. Now the back, we can just ladder it and put a few of these in. That's the easy option. But um, we can also be creative and make up a piece which I've done earlier. Now this is using that wire piece that I saved from the first video. And Nice curvy bit there. So I'm gonna use this as the back. Now this, you work your way up to this. Make a few simpler ones first, and then you'll um, have the confidence to make up a back piece like this. And what I can do is I can set that in as the back. So I'll drill it there, and there, and then uh, we'll work away with that. So I'll mark off my holes now for drilling. So now we have all our holes. As I say, we've got to use this so we can pop that in there. I was going to use these for the front. definitely going to cut some slopes on these as lead-in so that they slide into the holes and don't catch on the sides of the holes. I guess I could have done this before I hang them in really. Now it's a matter of putting it together. As I say, there's lots of play in these, so they can all move around. Now what I'd like to do now is maybe clean up around the holes so we can just with the knife just clean up some of these where it breaks out. Again, careful with the knife. We don't want to be cutting ourselves now, do we? This one's clean, this one. just. Now some of these, you see the dowel ends have all come 
stick it out nicely. One of these, because this is so thick, the dowel end hasn't actually come out, so sometimes I like to bang in a little bit of an off cut just to just so that it has a dowel end on it. Not necessary, but it just tidies it up a little bit nicer. Another thing I like to do now as well is trim off trim off these edges again just so that it's not sharp. To sit on. We need to sort this out, this rocking. So what we'll do is we'll work out which is level. If it's like that it's all a bit leaning this way. So if, that, if it's on the back leg like that that's level. So I could either cut this amount out of the front one and then I think I'll do that because it's tilted back quite a bit as well so I can work out what height this is. So pretty much this bit of scrap I have here. So I can draw that round. Draw that round there, this is close enough. And then I can draw it round this side here as well. My mark there and here, and I can cut that off, and that should flatten it out for us. That's a bit better. So, there we have the chair. We need to seat it now. Before a bit, I mentioned that. We could have done the back with just normal rails like this one, but um, say I made up this fancy back. Anyway, we're seating, so there's various things we can use. This one is done with seagrass, which is um, like a sort of leaf from warm countries, which is just twisted and paired. Um, this one here, quite nice, this is done with willow. So, and again, the top was just done with two bars and then woven between. So but the technique we're going to use today, because it's quite simple, is this. And this is using just normal chair chair webbing, which is here. And what I've done, I've dyed it green as well, just to make it look good. I've dyed it a nice olive green. Okay, first thing to do is what we'll do is we'll clip it at the back to start us off and to stop it fraying I usually fold it over and then I'll clip that just back here somewhere I'm using a staple gun you can use you could use tacks as well or nails or anything really but these are good long staples so I'm going to use those just to start it up. Then Tanya to work from the front. All we do is we just wrap up, wrap it up all the way across, round and round. side by side. So just keep going with this. So that's all across like that. And then we'll duck round the end post, whichever corner you end up at. And we're then ready to come across. Now what we do is when we come across, I'll start from the other side, we just go in and out in a weave. Under one, over, under, over, 
under, over, under. That's pretty much it. Like that. Then when we're at the other side, we go round the end post, round the end post here, back on the table, and then we can turn it off for this. We go right across the bottom. What we can do in and out of some on the across the bottom just to stop it hanging down. It doesn't have to be as strict as under over every single one. So just we duck and dive under a couple of them to the other side. Try and keep them flat so there's no twists in them. That's it. Now we're back on the top again. So now the top we do have to be disciplined. So here we can see this first one across. Over that one, under that one, over, under. So this next one, we have to go under that one, over that one, and under, doing exactly the opposite of what we just did. So, again, try not to get any, any twists in it. So, under that one, over the next one, under, over, under, over, under. Again, Raced across the bottom, just catching some. Now I'll just catch again the odd one, but I'll catch different ones from last time. So I'm going to go there, maybe one of these, and maybe one of those. And stop twisting again. So we're back on the top. So we go round again, do the opposite again. So we've gone under here, so we now go over there, under, over. So exactly the opposite of what we just did. Over, under. Now we do this all the way to the back of the chair. Pulling it a bit tight every now and then. We can tighten up at the end, so don't worry too much about tightening it. So the further we get across, <laughs> the less room we have to move. Not finished yet, cat. It's not finished. You can't sit on it just yet. Grand, and we've only got maybe two more to go. So, what I might do is, because this is getting a bit tricky to actually stick a whole roll through now, so I might guess the last two and trim it off. So that would be one of them. This will be my second. And then I'll finish back here somewhere, so I'll give myself a little bit. And this will be easier to weave to just the one. So again, get me straight, over, under, over, under. The opposite of what we just did. Now before we finish it off, we can actually just pull a bit more tightness into it. We can sort of start at the front and just feed it round. 
just to work out which way it's going. This way, so. Ground. Just to finish off now, we can just flip it over. And just staple it along here. And I might put a few more in there. And you can use tacks for this or staples. And that's where we started, so I'll put a couple in there as well to finish that off. So there we have it, seated as well. finally the chair so that's it for this time this video next time uh, we'll be doing more outdoor stuff same techniques sticky again so uh, we'll be doing probably a garden gate a fence and some sort of arch so uh, I'll see you then mm -hmm.